the City of Portland has begun a major repaving project on Outer Congress Street. In addition to resurfacing this important traffic corridor, the number of lanes will be reduced and other changes will be made to make the roadway more pedestrian and bicycle friendly. Brian Knobloch spoke with Portland's Director of Public Services, Mike Babinski, about the project. Mike, what's going on on Outer Congress Street, repaving and re remarking the lanes? What's, the go what's going on there? Yeah, indeed. Um, the project is related to a partnering project between the city and Main DOT. Uh, very unique opportunity for us to work together. Main DOT had plans to overlay Congress Street from Stevens Avenue to Johnson Road as part of their normal um, summer arterial work uh, for this year. They came to us uh, in the spring of, of this year and advised us of that project. We, in turn, advised them that we wanted to work with them on implementing some phases of the 2007 Congress Street Corridor Study, which basically looks at uh, providing a, some lane configuration changes, left turning movements, some bike accommodations, and some improved pedestrian features to help mitigate some of the speeding and the problems on that stretch of Congress Street. And what specifically are the changes that are going to be made as this goes forward? So the, the overall project has uh, some unique features to it that are building off of the 2007 corridor study. Um, and they generally include maintaining four 11-foot uh, travel lanes west of Garrison Street to Johnson Road. So that farthest west part, part will maintain the four. In the eastbound lanes at, at Westbrook Street, we'll create one uh, through lane to a point just west of Westbrook Street and it will provide a, a de dedicated left turn lane right on Westbrook Street at the intersection of Congress and Westbrook. That lane tends to function as a left turn movement anyway as you're traveling eastbound. So I think that, that will function as well. Throughout most of the corridor, there will be two travel lanes, a lane in each direction with a center turn lane to accommodate a left turn movement at Waldo Street at uh, the Stroudwater Village Medical Offices, and then as you're heading easterly uh, toward uh, Hobart Street, um, depends on which direction you're going. Those will provide, uh, as you're uh, in those locations, left turning lanes for safer uh, traveling as well. During, um, in addition, we'll also have uh, bike lanes or at least shoulders that provide a two and a half foot uh, s uh, shoulder lane for biking as well. West of Frost Street, that hill area, we will actually have a bike a climbing lane as well. And so that's sort of a unique feature. We've been working with uh, our bicycle uh, coalition uh, with respect to trying to accommodate that stretch of the city. There's a lot of bike activity, and so uh, this will be one of our first opportunities to actually experiment and uh, install the, the bike climbing lane as well. What impact do you expect this to have on the cars that are using it now? 25,000 cars a day use that? It's quite system. significant, yes. It's very significant. And so to sort of account for that or measure that, we're actually doing this project in phases. It's very unique. So the first phase, which is going on now, and due to the nature of traffic, as you mentioned, all the paving work that's going on, the resurfacing, is going on at night to accommodate what's, you know, the heavy traffic. Um, this week will be, I would call, sort of week one or phase one, where we will um, literally do the overlay. And then toward the end of this week, we actually will put down the first layer of, of the lane markings. And then we'll be able to uh, do some data gathering and understand what's the impact. What are we hearing from the public? What are we observing out in the field? Um, what kind of congestion is that causing? What kind of problems or no problems? particularly during peak times, a.m. And, and p.m. peak times. Um, and then uh, the third week, we will gather uh, our, all of our data from that experience and then hold, our plan is, or at least our third phase, is to hold a public meeting, probably in later July, uh, with Maine DOT and our, our staff and then the community and get some feedback. Uh, I'm sure we'll hear from commuters, we'll hear from the Stroudwater Neighborhood Association, the Hobart Neighborhood Association, and uh, that'll, that'll inform the final layer of, of the paint markings that we'll put down. So we're going to do it in two different phases. And people can participate in a survey online about this as well, is that right? They can. Very unique. Uh, and, and we, uh, again, that, that was a feature of our partnering arrangement with Maine DOT. 
They will host that on their site, uh, and, and all commuters, residents, anybody can actually go on that particular site and identify uh, their thoughts on how they like it, their concerns, uh, and other uh, comments as well. Great. Thanks very much. Okay. Thank you.